good to see everybody digitally. Uh, I'd like to thank also the Frankfurt Book Fair for presenting this digital uh, conference today being the trade publishing track day. It's great to be with you all online, at least. Um, and I hope you've all found a way through these challenging times, uh, whether you're in editorial, whether you're in rights, whether you're in marketing, sales, retail, or the distribution side of this great industry. So Hannah, um, I'm gonna just go through what I have to present. Yes. Um, feel free to interrupt me if I say something that makes no sense whatsoever or something that you wanna poke at. Please. We'll do. I don't. I'm sure what you say is going to make sense, but I will. Um, I'll jump in if uh, if we want if we want need to dig further into something. Please do, and then of course okay. there'll be time for Q and A at yeah. the end because I think you've given me some extra time, so I appreciate that. Yes. Um, so unfortunately, I, I will not have the opportunity to be with all of you attending Frankfurt this year, but I do look forward to seeing many of you in person in 2022. So we all know the world has gone through a global pandemic. It has touched all of us in many different ways. It has been hugely challenging for the world and to really zone in, it's been a huge challenge for our industry. Much has happened and much has changed in our international business. Many of you know that from print capacity to logistics, to huge demand spikes, which were unexpected, which has been pulling and pushing our global business in many different directions. But change in the global publishing industry has been a constant in our business. Changes in our world continue to provide new concepts and issues which inspire our great authors to write new books and for us to edit, market, and sell those wonderful titles around the world. Change in our business is what drives creativity, it, it creates opportunity, it incites cooperation, it also creates diversity and innovation in reaching our readers. These adverse times have demonstrated that people around the world turn to books for comfort and a brief escape from the onslaught of challenges the pandemic has brought us. In many ways, the pande pandemic put punctuation on the positive publishing narrative, which Marcus Dola, the global CEO of Penguin Random House, has been saying for a number of years, which is that we are in a vibrant and growing global trade book publishing business. That in fact, even though the world has been through a very challenging time, it is still the best time to be in this business. And there are several reasons for this. Speaking purely from the perspective of international sales and distribution, I can say definitively that we have been able to maintain our revenue pools through this very difficult time. And in fact, we've grown them significantly through this global pandemic. Even though the industry and the international book retail marketplace has been hugely challenged, due to lockdowns and logistics and supply chains, all of those being hurdles, the industry has maintained remarkably stable business models for both physical and digital distribution of our author's works. There has been a continued healthy international sales coexistence between the printed book alongside the ebook and other digital formats, with print books accounting for roughly 80% of our global sales. And we've been there for a number of years at this sort of 80, 20% level, at least for English language books from Penguin Random House US. At the same time, our global audience is growing significantly every year as the world's English reading population is growing quickly. And not just for English language, we've learning this from our sister companies around the world, that at the same time, of course, literacy rates are rising sharply worldwide. So demand for our books grow alongside that statistic. 
Our children's book sales have been one of the fastest growing book export categories. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Every publisher has experienced similar things. We've had remarkable increases in the children's space during the pandemic. And not just children's book, regular book trade retail, but we've managed to grow our revenues and expand our distribution in the education channels and English language teaching areas of our business, which has been very exciting and quite rewarding. Again, it has not been easy. Transportation, logistics issues plagued us. Print capacity and warehouse workforce constraints have massively disrupted our print supply chains. Getting printed books from point A to point B has been one of our major challenges since March of 2020, going on 19, almost 20 months. So what does that mean? So for example, as soon as commercial air traffic demand decreased back in March of 2020, many of the regularly scheduled flights, which many of us fly on, completely went away or were indefinitely canceled between North America and, Amer and Europe and North America and Asia and many other uh, sectors and travel legs of the world. That meant that air cargo capacity decreased by over 50%. And you may say, well, what does that have to do with book publishing? It has a lot to do with it. Um, a, most of our sales, most of our distribution for PRH US um, for frontless titles is flown over oceans uh, so that we can be on sale in print on day one in every store we sell to and every distribution partner we have. So we had to find new ways and spend a lot more time and resources in making sure our new titles were delivered on time for publication dates around the world. Our logistics team spent many late nights rerouting books to make on sale dates. It was extraordinary. It was like having air traffic control in our warehouse. But the supply demand model has been offset by an incredible surge in the demand for books. So not only did we have these incredible constraints in regular times, but we had a massive spike in demand for our books. These, um, these lockdowns created this unprecedented demand for our English language titles in every market we sell to. And we have seen significant double digit growth in many of our export markets. We have obtained extraordinarily high sales increases in the last year and a half. Of course, you know, it's a silver lining to a very tragic pandemic. And we, we wanna keep that in focus but it is a silver lining for our industry. Some of the countries and regions with the highest growth rates have been for us in the UK, in Australia, in Germany, France, India, the Philippines, Eastern Europe, and Scandinavia. And in fact, I can say we have reached a record level of export sales for Penguin Random House US in all of our history for our titles. But as you know, fulfilling, the, fulfilling this demand has been tough. These sales have not been easy for booksellers, book distributors, or our sister companies, and our international partners around the world to overcome the hurdles the pandemic created. And I know you've all experienced this. It has been remarkable how booksellers, it's been profoundly remarkable how booksellers have found new and innovative ways of reaching readers around the world. What we have seen is that traditional bricks and mortar retailers have become hybrid sellers with offline and online components to their business. Many international retailers organize themselves to adapt to readers who have been through on again, off again lockdowns. They followed the readers. It was amazing. Book readers moved online for work, as we all did, as we are right now. They moved online for shopping, for socializing, for schooling, for streaming, video gaming, and also reading. Consumers became hybrid shoppers 
that is online and offline. And they also increasingly became hybrid readers that is both print and digital book readers and audio listeners, adjusting to the lockdowns and retail opening and closings. These retailers found them wherever they were. Book readers also have increasingly used online to discover new titles and authors, whether that be through TikTok or other social media or just online through classic online retail. And retailers have used those social media channels to reach readers. Retailers have increasingly focused on obtaining, updating their websites to reach readers in their marketplace. For this reason, we have worked with a large number of retailers on our metadata feeds to enable the online discovery presentation to be up to date. Online sales have experienced explosive growth over the last year and a half, but it has not just been one major international online re retailer that has grown. We have seen many small, medium, large, and online retailers grow their share of English language book sales around the world. And I'll name a few, um, not, limited, not limited to this list I'm going to tell you about, but some of the highlights include Thalia in Thalia.de in Germany, Waterstones.com in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, Shopee and Lazada in Southeast Asia, JD.com in China, and BOL.com in the Netherlands. They have had incredible growth of English language book sales. Also, many independent retailers have also found their readers online, as I mentioned, and engaged with them, engaged with them in many ways, which they never did before the pandemic. It was an opportunity to be extremely creative in finding readers for independent bookstores. And I'm extraordinarily proud of what they've done and accomplished in reaching those readers. In terms of supply chain, our sister companies who sell and distribute our US titles had to find new transportation routes, as I mentioned earlier. In some cases, we worked together to extensively ramp up our local printing of PRH US titles. That is actually printing our titles in multiple spots around the world simultaneous to our US printing for export. This includes our sister companies like PRH Australia, PRH India and PRH China, where our books are widely sold and distributed. Taking a little bit of pressure off our US warehouse has helped alleviate some of the bandwidth issues in our warehouses in the US and to avoid the international supply chain bottlenecks by printing locally. Local and regional printing has helped propel our key front list titles by being on sale the same as publication day in the US and being in sync with digital formats on sale that day. Also in the US, we are continuing to do all we can to sustain physical retail. Um, our management over the last decade has invested over hundred million dollars into Penguin Random House's US supply chain. That helped propel us through the pandemic. And we plan to invest another $100 million to help retailers keep more stock, keep more titles in stock while further reducing inventory levels and minimizing returns. Nobody wants returns. On this sales front, we've had to adjust quite a bit. Um, we have an international team sprinkled around the world and we are very often moving cross-border to sell and promote our books. So how did we do that during the pandemic? We had to also go online. We had to engage with book buyers, retail and distributors, so that they were up to date with what our title publications were coming up and also what was going on with backlist promotions. So in order to do so, of course, we had many one-on-one -on -one meetings 
but we also had large virtual events for, for book buyers. And I'm going to have some action shots. In fact, if Liz, if you could put up image one now, um, just to demonstrate some of the things that Penguin Random House US has been doing to continue our outreach to booksellers. So this is just a simple shot, screenshot of the East Asia team presenting to roughly 60 book buyers. I think this was just a retail day or maybe a retail children's day presenting to book, to book buyers a new set of frontless titles. Image two, Liz, please. And this is just a shot, a simple shot of the book buyer. This is in Indonesia, I believe, at Paraplus Books. This is a book buyer listening to that presentation, taking notes, and hopefully buying lots of books. Okay, Liz, we can take that down for now. Thank you. Additionally, our international marketing and publicity team had to pivot their efforts to promoting new titles to readers using live social media. This has led to growing fan bases in various markets and selling books quickly. In fact, running out of stock. Many of these events that we had have not only given us great print sales, but also a surge in ebook and downloadable audio sales in local markets our authors have connected with. Liz, if we could put up image three, please. A little more show and tell. Uh, this is just an example of an online event. This is a Facebook Live event we did a few, did a few months ago um, in the Philippines. That's John Green coming in from the US, um, being interviewed by um, one of the members of the marketing team at Sketchbooks, also known as Fully Booked in the Philippines. The event had 14,000 views and physical books sold out in 13 minutes. Next image, Liz. Ah, here's an example of a, all the, another Facebook Live event with Jennifer Niven at the Uppsala English Language Bookshop in Sweden. Next image, Liz. Um, here is the venerable Kevin Kwan doing a virtual event uh, a few months ago, um, also with sketchbooks in the Philippines. Uh, he's very popular there, 1700, 1700 views, lots of print books sold. And last show and tell image, another Jennifer Nevin event, a little closer to our home at least. This is in uh, the, at the bookmark. This is a Instagram live event being hosted by the bookmark Puerto Rico. Okay, you can take that down, Liz, thank you. So in addition to our online and social media outreach, um, our online and digital export team have had to become more active in selling and filling the print supply chain gap in many markets and channels, including education, corporate and specialty retail. We will continue to work with all our retail and distribution partners to continue to grow our international sales through the continued pandemic and beyond to connect our authors with English language readers using old and new tools, which we have practiced all of us through the COVID-19 pandemic. We will do so by reaching out to readers online and offline. We will, we will present our authors titles so that they can be easily discovered and purchased in print form, in ebook form, or downloadable audio, wherever readers are in the world. That's all I have to Hi. say. Hannah, please. Over you to guys you. have been really, really busy. <laughs> it sounds like this has been a pretty intense year. Um, before I ask my question, we do have one question from the audience from Kim Catalano, and she's asking, how you pre-promoted these online events. I'm assuming Kim is talking about the online events um, and how you built up the audience there. Yeah, we, we partnered with our local retailers. So they have you know social media channels and they were blasting out the events. And we also have social media channels at Penguin Random House US International Sales, geo-targeting whichever city, and retailer that we are going to be cooperating with. Um, 
that's it. Were, were you also working with your local offices um, if, if you were doing something in the region? If we were doing something in a region, either our home uh, home office in that in that marketplace or our sister company as well, were engaged in promoting it online. Um, and if those stores were open that were hosting the events, I think for a couple of those events, we actually did have stores that were open. They would also uh, promote them in store. Oh, cool. So you get a real true hybrid promotion. A true hybrid yep. promotion. A couple of those events were screened also live in store as well. Wow. That is that is also a new dimension to events as we're finding out in Frankfurt. It's um, it's not easy to pull all of these sort of hybrid events off. So um, and it's we not have all another... perfect. It's not all <laughs> yeah, perfect. Technically, perfect. That's right. <laughs> lots of glitches, you know, yeah, we don't have the production true. team you have. So uh, this is going to have a great production it. team working on the conference. I have to say they're they're doing an amazing job. Um, we have another question from the audience from Bridget Marmion, and she is asking um, if books were actually sold live during um, sold during your social media events and were they sold online and how that worked. So there were various, there's various answers to that. Um, uh, some of those retailers were selling them live at the event and taking orders right there. Others were asking to be emailed. Uh, we had the whole mix of those types of things happening. Um, I think the most successful events were the ones that they were taking orders right there live. Yeah. And it wasn't us though, it was the retailer and it was their systems that were running that part of it. We of course, provided the books, got the books there so that they had the stock to sell live. Sure. I guess it also depends on, on the individual retailer and what their capacity is for exactly. online sales. Exactly. Um, while we, if we have any other questions uh, from the audience, please post them now. Um, but in the meantime, I have lots of other questions to ask you. Um, so my main question, I guess, is, you know, you've talked about a lot about different trends that are happening or that, diff you know, things that change during the pandemic. Um, how much of this is going to continue forward? Like, for example, um, with local printing, are you planning to continue to do that? Or once the supply chain kind of restabilizes, are you going to go back to what you were doing before? Yeah, I mean, I don't have the crystal ball. So, you know, yeah. maybe you do. I, you know, <laughs> I wish. I, I think we're, we're projecting to keep this going for a while. We've discovered a lot of efficiencies, you know, there's some, there's also the, the green side of the whole story of, you know, flying books around the world is it's not the greenest way to go about things. So we do like very much printing regionally, printing locally. Uh, the efficiency of just that side of the uh, equation is, is, is wonderful. Um, and uh, we, we're learning every day uh, of, of, of benefits of printing locally and regionally. So I think we have unpacked a new, um, a new way uh, of expanding and, and, and our readership and being more efficient. Uh, so I think that part of it will continue. Um, and I do think that the growth that we've all experienced in readership, I think is going to sustain. We are, we are betting on it. Uh, we believe that, you know, just like things that happen in our industry from, you know, the growth of YA and children's books you know, those kids are growing up and have grown up into adult readers. And um, it's lovely to see this industry continuing to find new readers around the world. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think this is, it, it's, it's looking bright. I mean, I do have to uh, address that, you know, there are probably some, there are some places in the world that didn't have the same kind of success during the pandemic for a number of reasons. Um, you know, distribution challenges, uh, infrastructure. So um, hopefully this has been kind of an impetus for people to, or to help solve those problems. Um, did sure. you find, I mean, did you find any regions where it was particularly difficult to, um, to get books or to sell books during the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, see, there were markets which simply locked down in every, possible way. So, you know, parts of Latin America at during this pandemic have been very stressed and strained as I'm sure we have um, folks coming in from those region, that region. Uh, Brazil was incredibly challenging uh, at times. Um, <clears throat> parts of Southeast Asia who have more recently experienced pandemic spikes 
you know, basically, um, we've haven't we've been unable to operate in some of these markets for some months. Um, so yes, there are areas of the world that have gone through periods of huge challenges for book selling, and we recognize that. And of course, you know, we know of colleagues and friends and partners around the world who've also experienced the loss of family and friends and colleagues. And that's also a very, very challenging thing. Yeah, no, it's definitely not been an easy time. It's, it's a mixed bag. I mean, um, but I think, you know, hopefully as we are discussing more of these things, more solutions are coming up for, um, for places that uh, are still developing their, their publishing distribution and infrastructure. And um, yeah, hopefully we can, <laughs> continue the silver lining it looks like cyrus we are closing we are running out of time for your panel do you have any final thoughts that you want to um share just that um this at the beginning looked like the worst possible thing for our industry and for you know the health side of it has been horrific but it has brought us in a very strange way closer and I'm humbled by that. And I appreciate all the efforts of the entire industry and particularly our retail partners around the world. Oh, that's a wonderful place to leave it. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking time to share all of this with us. Pleasure. Bye everybody. Thanks, Have a great day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.